Hey friends, Mandy from Chapel Forge. So today we're gonna to be talking about pickling eggs. Um, so I did a big egg sale last week, lots of local customers we got our eggs out to. Um, and of course I still have a ton left. So I washed up these two. I typically wash them before I hard boil them simply because we've, it's been raining here for days and days and days. Um, and so the eggs are muddy and whatever. And when I hard boil them in the instant pot, sometimes they crack open and I just don't want all that schmutz getting on the eggs. So typically before I hard boil them, I do wash them. Um, so I have two bowls here of eggs ready to go. Aren't they so pretty? Um, so I'm going to show you that process today. I'm going to show you how I hard boil the eggs in the Instant Pot and then um, our process for pickling them. I get a lot of questions about this because I often like post a picture on Instagram or Facebook or whatever of a jar of old pickle juice and say, I'm going to take this and turn it into pickled eggs. And people are like, what do you mean? It's not old juice. So it's super simple. It's a great way to have a no waste kitchen. If you follow me at all, you know how um, excited I get about not wasting things. So that's what we're going to talk about today. All right, so after you have your eggs, and obviously you don't have to grow your eggs at home to do this. You can use store-bought eggs. You can buy eggs from your local farmer friend down the road, whatever it is that you have. Um, I often, too, um, if I have eggs that have been sitting for several weeks or whatever, um, we'll hard-boil those, too. I, honestly, we eat them scrambled or whatever. I don't usually get too hyped up about this, but if I have, especially this time of year when I have an excess, if there's ones that have been sitting for a while, um, obviously I'm not selling those, so they're perfect for this. So what you want to do is get your Instant Pot out. I have two because I have my mom, one of my mom's spares. Um, you want to put in like a cup of water, half inch, inch of water. I mean, you don't have to get too anal about it. Um, and then you want to put your racks in. So if you don't have a rack to go in your Instant Pot, I wouldn't get too hyped up about it. I've honestly put my eggs in and forgot to put the rack in and they were fine. You might get a couple that crack on the bottom, but you're going to be cracking them open anyway. So I really don't feel like it matters. Um, so, but best practice is to probably put your rack in. So get your little bit of water, get your rack in, and then we're going to load it up with eggs. Don't load it past the max line. Um, so they'll have like a two thirds full line in there. You don't want to put them past that. All right. So we have our pots full. I went a little past the two thirds line, but It'll be fine, I promise. So you're just gonna um, put your lids on and you're gonna obviously turn your tops to seal. Um, if you don't have an Instant Pot, obviously you can do this on the stove. You don't have to do it in an Instant Pot. I just like it this way because it's quick. They come out perfect like every time. They peel really easily. I don't have to babysit it, you know, whatever. So we are going to get these going. So what you're gonna do in the Instant Pot is you're gonna do five minutes on high pressure. You're gonna let it steam for five minutes and then you're gonna put them in a bowl of ice water for five minutes. So we're gonna start that process. So Instant Pots often have different, depending on like what model you have, sometimes a different brand, they'll have different, um, you know, words. And like, there's an egg one on here. Frankly, I never use any of these buttons maybe yogurt sometimes um so wasn't paying attention so we need to take these to five minutes so they're both at five um they're gonna say on if you're not familiar with instant pot i know that i have a lot of friends who have instant pots and they're like i never use it because i'm too scared um when it says on that means it's starting so sometimes it's a little confusing because you put your numbers in or your time and it like acts like it's not going to do anything after a few seconds it'll flip to on when it says on that means that it's coming to pressure um, so if you forgot to seal your top, this is when some steam might start to come out and it'll remind you, crap, I need to turn, you know, turn that little knob. Um, so it'll say on once it's up to pressure, then it'll say five minutes, it'll start counting down. Um, and then once it's done, you can, you're supposed to do natural release on this. So you can just let it go for that five minutes. You can flip it open and let it go. Frankly, I've done it both ways and I feel like it doesn't matter. So we're gonna do high pressure for five minutes and let it steam for five minutes. And then we'll come back and we'll do the ice bath. All right, so I'm letting the last of the steam come out of this one. Um, I already took the lid off of this one. You can see I let these sit here for a couple minutes. Ideally, you should really pull them out like when they're done. But of course I got to doing a hundred other things and that didn't happen and they'll be fine. Trust me, I do this all the time. So um, you'll notice that some of them have cracks in them. It's not a big deal. Again, they're gonna be fine. 
Um, this one, I should be able to take the lid off this one soon. So I'm going to get all of these in my ice bath. So I always bust out my big old bowl for this one. Um, get all those in there and then we'll get to peeling. All right, so I have all the eggs in the egg bath. You'll see that some of them, like they start to come out a little bit or whatever. Probably if I pulled them out, like right when they were done, I wouldn't have this problem. But not a big deal, whatever. I'm not like selling these. They don't need to look pretty for anyone but us. So I'm not super worried about it. So we're gonna let these sit in their ice bath for five minutes and then we will start peeling. All right, so Zuzu and Zad are working on peeling the eggs. So we have the eggs in here, you can see some of them, not always so pretty, but they'll be fine. We always keep a scrap bowl close because inevitably other snacks and mess are happening while we're doing this, but I'll feed all these shells back to the chickens. No, I do not dry them. No, I've never had an issue and it's always been fine we have had egg eaters but it was so intermittent and such a short time and so i think it's fine and we will just throw these to the chicken so they're gonna keep peeling these zuzu thinks she is a big helper and she just picks them up and throws them down or puts them in the wrong bowl but it's super cute so we have that i have my next two ready to go so as soon as we get these peeled we'll show you how we're gonna do our pickling all right so as far as using up old pickle brine, so this was probably, looks like pickled squash. Um, so it was probably pickled squash, pickled okra. You could use pickled peppers, pickled cucumbers. I mean, really the possibilities are endless. So obviously there's still a lot of good stuff in there. So what I'm gonna do is load this up with eggs and then top it off with white vinegar. There's tons of seasoning in there. There's actually still some squash in there that you might be able to see. Um, so this is perfect. Like, don't throw this away, don't dump this. I see so many times people buy like these brines these pickles at the store and then they just dump their brines and there is like so much goodness in there I probably this is pickled squash from this year actually so we must have ate these first because I didn't pickle any squash last year um so this is like still pretty fresh I mean I only did them a couple months ago but even so if it was nine months old I'd still use it so this is perfect I'm going to fill this up and then um, I'll show you what it looks like when it's topped off I wanted to mention too that sometimes this happens <laughs> Sometimes your yolks fall out and it happens. And then sometimes you have the rest of the egg here. So um, you can just throw those in. I mean, you're gonna eat them anyway. They're just not going to be all in one piece. So you can see here, I am just filling this jar up. All my brine mess is on the bottom. Um, it'll float up. So usually what I do is like loosely fill it up like this so that some of that brine can still get up. And then I'll top it off with the vinegar. If I have space, I might add a couple more eggs. So we're gonna finish that. So when you're doing something like this, you might need to, like I said, only put them to maybe like here and then kind of just do one of these numbers, get it all good and mixed up and then you can finish filling it. All right, so we're almost full here. I'm just gonna top this off with a couple more. I mean, you might as well fill it as much as you can because why not and probably just put a little bit more vinegar in here and they don't have to be covered i mean it's not like you're fermenting it or anything nothing's gonna mold they're gonna be in the fridge so um yeah just put your lid on and then you have if you can you know kind of do this kind of get that scattered down there once it's in the fridge if you want to go down and give it a shake once in a while i mean you totally can you don't have to usually the flavor pretty well disperses anyway but you can see we have um seasoning all the way up through and we'll probably be able to use this brine again all right so we have three jars of red beet eggs and a jar of just regular like dill pickle eggs um one is a new jar and two i just kind of topped off and the, of the red beet and then the yeah. dill pickle um I, you saw that one. So that one was empty. Um, so we have that half gallon jar. So now we're gonna work on the barbecue eggs. So in here I have about, I don't know, like a cup of vinegar, a cup of white wine vinegar. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it. We canned some peach jalapeno barbecue sauce this year. So we're gonna use that and put it in here. Um, it's a little spicy. So I'm thinking with all of the other things it has going on that it should kind of mellow it out. So we're gonna work on that. And then we will work on maybe a small jar of spicy eggs, which we'll probably do with like sriracha or something. All right, so we got a gallon of peach jalapeno barbecue eggs, which these are gonna be delicious. I'm pretty excited about these. Zad had a great idea. We have maybe, I don't know, three dozen eggs left. So I think we're gonna do um, a hot pepper mustard one, a sriracha one, and an Old Bay. 
So, as usual, we change the plan a hundred times. So we're gonna get all kinds of yummy eggs out of this project. All right, so Zad is working on the brew for the Old Bay, so we're gonna do just Old Bay seasoning and vinegar. This one's gonna be somewhat experimental. I think we may have done something like this similar in the past. Um, it's pretty hard to screw up pickled eggs. If you pull them out in a couple weeks and they just aren't, um, you know, quite flavored enough, you can always up the flavor. All right, so Zad is working on, which one of these? Mustard eggs. So we have, um, this is our sweet hot mustard, which we canned in August of 2020. It's delicious, it's our favorite mustard. Um, so I think we did that, some dry mustard, some turmeric. What else are you put in? White vinegar? And that's it? So it'll probably be something like that. This is how Zed cooks. He just a little of this and a little of that. You know, that whole like when your ancestors say that's enough child, that's how Zed operates when he cooks. So we are going to do some of these pickled eggs, the mustard pickled eggs. I'm pretty excited. So we're going to wind up with, we're going to end up with one, two, three, four, I think five kinds of eggs. All right. So we ran out of eggs, which is fine. Um, so we got four kinds of eggs. So we got mustard eggs, Old Bay eggs. No, we did get five still. So we got mustard eggs, Old Bay, dill, red beet, and peach jalapeno barbecue. This is exciting. This is a, ignore this. This is a lot of eggs that I am so excited to put in the downstairs fridge. So just a little bit about like curing and storage and whatever. So these will sit in the downstairs fridge well, to eat them, but you could eat them tomorrow. Obviously they wouldn't have as much flavor. You could eat them in a month and they'd probably have a really good amount of flavor. If you eat them in two, three, four weeks, like I said, they don't have enough. You could pull out some eggs, add a little bit more flavor, put those extra eggs in like a pint or a quart or whatever you need to do um, to try to get the flavor up. We, if you follow us, you know, we're pretty willy nilly. We just like throw things together. Again, as I always say, like I follow safe canning practices and blah, 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 but we're talking about some pickled eggs in the fridge and I'm not super concerned about it. So we are going to have one, two, three, four, five, six and a half gallons of pickled eggs, which I am stoked about. Our chickens are still laying like mad women, which is great. So, you know, we're selling eggs, we're pickling eggs, not a ton of water glassing, stupid flies, not a ton of water glassing going on here lately. We have been getting the remnants of Hurricane Ian. Um, <coughs> I just pureed up <coughs> a bunch of lemon drop peppers Whew. and got a little breather in and that, that didn't feel good. Okay. So we're getting the remnants of that and it has been raining for, gosh, probably five five days now, I think, and it's supposed to rain all day again tomorrow. So our legs have been super muddy. So there's no water glassing happening right now, but pickling is an amazing way to use up your eggs. Um, you can go crazy with the flavors. Like I said, we were gonna do like a buffalo or something, but whatever, we got the jalapeno. I feel like that's close enough. Um, you can mix your vegetables in with these. They're just so versatile. You literally cannot mess them up. Um, so if you have questions about this or how to do it, let me know in the comments. Um, you can follow us at Chapel Hill Forge and look at our homesteading resources, all kinds of cool information there on my blog. And then obviously we'd love if you subscribe. So we hope you love this video and that you go make some yummy, delicious pickled eggs.